This mini PC won't win any design awards. It looks like it was inspired by a camcorder and disco balls. But forget all that. What it lacks in beauty? The mix up in performance. Mostly. The Ace Magician Ryzen 5 features AMD's Ryzen 5600U processor, which is exactly why I bought it, as it's the only reasonably priced mini PC I found featuring this Zen 3 based CPU. Oh, you thought I bought it for its wonderful industrial design? <laughs> well, guilty as charged. All jokes aside, I applaud this unit for doing something different. It stands vertically compared to almost every mini its size out there, and it has the power dial. Now stick with me, it's more interesting than you think. Something else it does well is stay mostly quiet, although it depends on the chosen power mode, but we'll get into that later. The AMR5 is marketed as a light gaming PC. It features a 6 core 12 thread CPU with Vega graphics, dual NVMe Gen 3 SSD slots, and DDR4 Sodium RAM up to 3200 MHz. The bare bones kit with no memory or storage is 390 US dollars or around $600 Aussie after taxes. The seller I bought it from listed it with a two year warranty. I know I say this a lot, but this is the easiest PC you'll ever build. The side panel is magnetic and once pulled off allows you to access the storage and RAM slots. If it wasn't for the M.2 screws, you wouldn't even need a screwdriver to put it together. I installed two NVMEs and 16 GB of 3200 MHz RAM. Installing Windows 11 is no problem since Secure Boot and TPM is supported. The AMR5 has an audio jack, dual USB 3 and Type-C with display out on the front. On the rear you've got two USB 3, DisplayPort, HDMI, Gigabit LAN and Barrel Jack power input. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth are included. This mini PC is almost completely made out of plastic, which I don't like, but the plastic quality is good and the build quality is solid. Inside the box is a 65 watt power supply, a manual which says nothing useful, and HDMI cable. Before I launch into the benchmarks, games and emulators, let's go over the power dial. So the power button clicks in to turn on the unit and can be twisted to zoom in the camcorder. I mean, Change the power mode on the mini. Silent mode runs the CPU at 10 watts base and lights up blue. Balance mode runs at 15 watts and lights up green. And performance mode runs at 25 watts and is red. This is a cool gimmick, which allows you to limit the maximum power usage of the CPU. I think most people will set the dial to one setting and leave it, but at least for a day, you'll probably play around with it. Here's an example of it in action. It's a cool gimmick, but there's a problem with it. As I found out after much trial and error, the performance dial only works fine from a clean boot with Windows 11, and probably 10 as well. Clean boot is from a completely powered off state. When fast boot activates, it interferes with whatever the power dial is doing to function and ends up stuck on the 15 watt balance mode. Turning the dial does nothing. So for the dial to work every time, you need to go to power options in control panel, then change the settings that are currently available, and uncheck turn on fast startup. That'll fix the problem for good. This was not mentioned in the manual, and why am I not surprised? But, yes, there's another one. The power dial also doesn't work if the unit is put into sleep mode. Once the PC is awake again, bam, stuck on 15 watt balance mode. Only a restart or clean boot fixes that. Unfortunately, I doubt the average person will notice this. The only way to see it apart from the lower performance is by using something like MSI Afterburner or Hardware Info to show the CPU power draw. Since recording the video, I have been in touch with Ace Magician support and they assure me the problems will be fixed. If they are, I'll pin the info in the comments section. Annoyingly, there's no link to download drivers in the box, and I couldn't find a website with them either. I ended up searching for drivers using the vendor ID and device manager, but this is not how it should be. After finally getting a reply from the seller, I've included their link to the drivers in my description. On the official website, there is an LED lighting app, 
but no drivers. The lighting app allows you to switch between three different lighting modes or turn off the lights completely. But the lighting config isn't saved, so if you reboot the PC, it just lights up again in rainbow mode, making that not very useful. All right, benchmarks. Everything was tested with the turbo button. I mean, the performance mode, and I'm comparing it to the i5 and i7 NUC 11 units. The i5 is currently the same price here in Oz. The AMR5 Cinebench single core score is just over 3% higher than the i5s. But in multi-core, it puts the NUX to shame with the AMR5 ahead by 17.5% over the i7. Pass marks of various CPU workloads has the AMR5 in front by over 23%. This faster CPU also wins out when it comes to video encoding, with the AMR5 being faster than the i7. If only we could say the same for graphics performance. The Vega graphics get soundly beaten by the i5 NUC in 3D Mark DirectX 11. Almost 30% and almost 20% in DirectX 12. So we've got a very powerful CPU which mostly beats the much pricier i7 NUC but has weaker integrated graphics than the i5. Still, it makes for a plenty powerful home office desktop or media player. Now, for the light gaming tests. A couple of esports titles to get started. CSGO at 1080p high bounces around from the mid 50 to 70 FPS mark. It's heavily GPU bottlenecked, so turning down the graphics will help get the frame rate up. Valorant at 1080p has an 80 to 120 FPS range and plays great. Resident Evil Village at 720p low mostly stays in the mid 40s to mid 60s FPS range. God of War is now playable thanks to FSR 2.0 on Ultra Performance Mode and low detail settings. You get around 30 FPS. Elden Ring is in the 30s to 40s at 720p low, which isn't great. Forza Horizon 5 almost manages to get a locked 60 FPS at 720p low. So yeah, light gaming is the correct term. You can boost performance by adding even more wattage to the CPU with something like the Ryzen mobile tuning app but I wanted to show the performance out of the box. Emulation is up next, which is where the AMR5 does really well. PSP emulation isn't a problem. Gran Turismo Mobile is a locked 60 FPS, even at seven times the resolution. Ghost of Sparta runs well, even at five times the res. Unfortunately with PS2, the Vulkan renderer crashes the emulator or produces broken graphics, so I had to use DirectX 12. Gran Turismo 4 runs pretty well at 720p. Tekken Tag Tournament runs full speed at 720p. Raising the resolution any higher tanks performance. SSX Tricky also works fine. Most PS2 games should work great at 720p. If the Vulkan renderer issue is fixed, you might be able to play some games at 1080p. Wii U games are also a good match for this mini. Splatoon runs almost at a lock 60 FPS. Same with Tekken Tag 2. Breath of the Wild hits the mid 30s with the 60 FPS mod. Not great, but playable.
PS3 games are a mixed bag. Heavenly Sword is a lock 30 FPS. Born Conspiracy runs in the mid 20s. I tried Motorstorm Pacific Rift and a couple of others, but it just crashed the emulator. Finally, I tried Nintendo Switch and Metroid Dread managed to play pretty well with almost a lock 60 FPS, but other games, not very well. Max power draw from the wall was 57 watts and it idled around 14. Changing the power modes didn't make any difference to idle wattage. It only affected the max power draw. As a bonus, I tested Cinebench with each power mode to show you the difference in CPU performance. 15 watt balance mode definitely provides the best performance per watt. Maximum temperature reached under load was 89C at 21 ambient. There was no thermal throttling reported. The CPU here runs cooler than in the NUC 11s. Fan noise is low for both the silent and balanced power mode. You only really start hearing it in performance mode when it's being pushed under load. So there we have it, a capable performer which takes the win from the i7 NUC when it comes to CPU performance. For graphics, the AMR5 falls behind, but as an eSports or emulation box, it works well. As a media player, you can turn down the wattage and really get a quiet system, as long as you don't use sleep mode. Performance is good, build quality is good, dual NVMEs is great. I like that it stands vertically. I don't like the lights or the camcorder look, but apart from that, it's one of the better non-Intel NUC minis I've seen on the market and mildly impressed me. Pricing could always be lower. That's all for this one. For more mini PC videos, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Cheers.